Hello and welcome to Thor Labs. My name is Renee. Today I'm going to demonstrate the technique I use to couple CF flanges, as well as point out a few of their features and show you some things that I've learned that help me when I work with them. During this demonstration, I'll be using this T with CF flanged ports, a fiber optic feed through, copper gaskets, fiber connector cleaner, fiber inspection scope, some wrenches and adjustable pliers, gloves, wipes, and isopropyl alcohol. I've also made my work surface safe for vacuum components by laying down a sheet of aluminum foil. The foil is also useful for catching any material that might flake from components that I've removed from my vacuum system. Food grade aluminum foil has always been acceptable for my applications. When I'm working with vacuum components, I'll wear a hairnet, lab coat, booties, and gloves in order to keep from contaminating components that are going to be exposed to vacuum. I won't be wearing a lab coat for this demonstration, but I would like to show you how I use my gloves and sleeves together. So first I'll put on a layer of gloves. And then I'll put my arms through the sleeves. The sleeves have a seam, and what I like to do is poke my thumb through the seam near the cuff. This keeps my sleeve from getting pushed up my arm as I work. I always double glove since it's easy to rip a glove and the double gloving just gives me extra protection against contaminating something. When I pull on my second layer of gloves, they seal the end of my sleeve and when I need to remove and replace my top layer of gloves, the sleeve over my thumb keeps the first layer of gloves in place. CF flange ports are found on vacuum systems operating at pressures of around 10 to the negative 8 torr and better. On other systems, CF flanges may not be needed to reach the operating pressure, but they can be preferred due to the long life and durability of the metal gaskets. The CF flange design is genderless, so any two that are the same size can be coupled together. While the sizes are standardized, the way of specifying the size is not. Some manufacturers specify the outer diameter of the flange, and others provide a DN number that is related to the size of the largest pipe that can be welded to the flange. All CF flanges include a sharp circular edge, which is called the knife edge. This edge is the boundary between atmosphere and vacuum. On the atmosphere side, the slope up to the edge is gradual, while on the vacuum side, it's an abrupt step down. The top of the knife edge is slightly lower than the flange's top surface. Due to this, the outer wall of the groove helps keep the gasket in place. In addition, the bolts around the circumference of the flanges can be fully tightened without causing one knife edge to grind against the other. The vacuum seal is created when the metal gasket is compressed between the two flanges. During compression, the hard metal of the knife edge bites into the softer metal of the gasket, ideally shaping the metal gasket so that it evenly fills the space between the two knife edges and leaves no openings. Defects in the knife edge, such as notches, are not well filled by the compressed gasket and can be sources of vacuum leaks. Leaks can also result when the gasket has not molded perfectly to the contours of the knife edges during tightening. 
This can happen if the compression rate is not uniformly applied as the bolts are tightened. To ensure uniform compression, it's recommended that the bolts be tightened gradually, following a pattern. Everyone seems to have their own favorite pattern. However, there's common agreement that as the pattern is followed, each bolt should only be tightened a little bit, about a twelfth of a turn. I estimate this by imagining that I'm moving the hour hand on an analog clock to the next number, such as from 1 to 2 o'clock. After the pattern has been completed once, it should be repeated, and each bolt tightened a little bit more. This process should be repeated until either the two flanges are touching one another or it is not possible to further tighten the bolts. I'll be using this port on the T to demonstrate the approach I use to decouple and couple two CF flanges. I've covered this port with a plastic cap and I've crumpled aluminum foil around this port and both approaches are used to protect the knife edge from damage. If this were part of a system that's currently in use, both of these ports would be coupled to CF flanges and the entire system would be under vacuum. In order for me to remove this flange, I would first need to valve off all the pumps on the chamber and then raise the pressure inside the chamber to atmosphere. I would not want to introduce room air into the chamber in order to raise the pressure. This is because there's a lot of water in room air in the shape of humidity and I want to keep water out of the system. Water molecules are very good at sticking to the inside of the chamber, and the more water molecules that are stuck inside the chamber, the longer it will take for the system to pump down to operating pressure. So instead of using room air, what I would do is use a tank of clean, dry nitrogen. Connect that to the chamber. When all the pumps are valved off, when I'm ready to remove the flange, I would open the valve on the nitrogen tank and watch as the pressure comes up to atmosphere. As soon as it's at atmosphere, I would close the valve on the nitrogen to keep from overpressurizing the chamber, which can happen because all of the ports on the chamber are still closed. And now that the system is at atmospheric pressure, I can remove these bolts in any order. Once the flange is nice and loose, I can open the valve on my nitrogen tank just until I feel a soft flow of nitrogen from the port. That flow of nitrogen will keep the room air out of the chamber and I'll let the nitrogen flow for as long as the chamber is open. I have to be more careful when there are only two bolts left because removing just one of them is going to cause the, the flange to swing. So now I'll actually have to hold the flange. As you can see, there's an optical fiber attached to the feed-through. Before I do anything else, I'm going to remove the fiber. And cap it. As you can see, the gasket is stuck to this port. This happens sometimes. And when it happens, it's very tempting to reach for a screwdriver to pry it out. But this is a dangerous approach because a slip of the screwdriver can nick the knife edge, causing a permanent leak. And I'm not aware of a way to fix a damaged knife edge. 
A safer approach is to use a pair of adjustable pliers. Position the pliers so that they grasp the inner and outer edges of the gasket, and then pop the gasket out. I'm not going to be actively working with this port for a little while, and when this is the case, I always cover the port with aluminum foil. And this is again to try to keep room air out of the vacuum system. And I will be careful with the fiber as I'm doing this. There are a couple of handling considerations to keep in mind when working with fiber feed-throughs. One is that torque applied to the tube can damage the optical fiber and the glass hermetic seal inside the tube. So when picking up the feed-through or handling it, do it by grasping the flange. Another thing to keep in mind is the maximum temperature this feed-through can tolerate is limited. So it's important to keep the temperature of this feed-through below the specified maximum during both operation and bake-out. I'm now going to prepare this flange to be mounted to this port. The first thing I want to do is to inspect the knife edge to make sure it's nearly perfect. I don't want to see any scratches or dents. Imperfections away from the knife edge bother me less because they don't contribute to the vacuum seal. This knife edge appears to be in good condition. Now I'm going to clean it. I'll use a wipe wetted with a little isopropanol. After I've used the wipe once, I'll discard it because I don't want any material that the wipe has picked up to be redeposited. And now this flange is ready for our gasket. I'll be using uncoated quarter-hard copper gaskets. These gaskets are commonly found on vacuum systems that aren't baked out very frequently. Copper gaskets are individually packaged like this. So this is the inner edge that would be exposed to the vacuum, and this is the outer edge that's going to be exposed to atmosphere. So in this case, I can open the bag without touching the gasket. I'll take the sharp outer edge of the gasket and run it along the table to create a hole in the bag. And now I'll squeeze the gasket through the hole in the bag that I've created and onto the flange without touching it. And it's okay if this gasket lands a little off-center like this. It's fine to just touch the outer edge a little bit and nudge it into the groove. Now this flange is ready to be mounted on the port, and now I need to prepare the port. The first thing I'm going to do is clean and inspect the end of the fiber. And now I'm going to inspect the end face. It appears to be in good condition. And I'll now connect it to this flange. The next thing I need to do is to clean and inspect the knife edge on the port. Again, I'm looking for any perfections on the knife edge. I want it to be perfect. And I don't care about imperfections away from the knife edge. The quality of the knife edge looks good to me. So I'm going to clean it the same way I did before. While I'm doing this, I want to protect the fiber, so I'm probably going to need two wipes. And I'll discard the wipe. And then clean the other half. And discard the wipe. And now I'm ready to couple these two flanges together. You may notice that there are channels etched in both the flange and the port. 
If I were using gasket clips, it would be necessary to align these two channels to one another, but since I'm not using gasket clips, the alignment doesn't matter. Okay, so I brought the two flanges together, but I really don't know how well the gasket is seated at this point because I can't see. One way to figure this out is to just rotate this flange. If the movement is smooth, then the gasket is well seated because the gasket's acting a little like a bearing. If the movement were uneven or if it felt funny, then the gasket is probably out of place and it's possible to move the gasket into place by just shifting this flange around a little bit. I am going to align the channels. I don't need to, but I like to because when they're aligned, I know that the bolt holes are going to be well aligned. Some people think that the channels need to be aligned in order to leak check the flange, but that's not the case. The helium can get in between the flanges and go straight to the gasket, even if the uh, flanges are very tightly coupled. The first thing I want to do is insert two bolts. They're going to hold the two flanges together. And I'm going to make them a little less than finger tight. So as you can see, these two flanges are only loosely connected. And if you remember, I have a tank of nitrogen that's still open and flowing. If this is the last open port on my vacuum system, I will want to close the valve on my nitrogen tank now. This will allow me to close this port without overpressurizing my vacuum chamber. I can make these bolts finger tight and apply all the other bolts. Now that all these bolts are finger tight, I can use my wrenches to tighten them further. You will want two wrenches, one to keep the nut in the back from spinning, and then one to apply the torque in the front. So with the star pattern that I use, I'll start at the top, go directly across, tightening about a twelfth of a rotation each time. Then I'll go one over from the last one I tightened up on the right, directly across, starting to tighten when I feel some resistance. Go to the last one on the right, about a twelfth of a turn, and the last one on the left. So all the bolts have been tightened once, and I'll just want to continue this pattern until none of them can be tightened anymore. These bolts feel mostly tightened to me, so I'm going to round, go around one more time and just make sure they all are tight. You know you're finished when you can't tighten the bolts anymore or when the flanges are touching. And now that I'm finished, I can remove my gloves. The way I remove gloves is to try to contain any contamination that might be on my gloves. So I'll take them off inside out. I'll use the pinky of one hand under the cuff 
of my opposite glove and pull it off while gathering that glove into my fist. And then I'll use the pinky on this hand under this cuff to pull it off inside out with the first glove inside the second. And now I can dispose of this. After removing my sleeves, I can remove my second glove layer. I'll do it the same way. The opposite pinky under the cuff of my glove, pull it off inside out, gather it up into my opposite hand, and then this pinky under this glove to create a package. I hope this helps you in the lab someday, and if you have any questions, please contact Tech Support.